Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Dark Domains, the second edition and expansion by Mr. B Games and by H Laboratory. This is a two to five player game that takes about an hour to two hours to play and is for roughly ages 14 and up. In the game Dark Domains, like my previous video, if you watched it says, you are playing as a dark overlord in control of minions and monsters and mercenaries. And your objective is to basically create locations on the map, maybe a keep, maybe a farm, and then eventually turn them into your actual locations, the wasteland and the outpost. These locations and monsters you're gonna be getting is going to be giving you evil throughout the game. At the end of the game, if you have the most evil compared to any of your other evil overlords out there, you're the winner. And in order to do that, you'll be doing some tile placement, tableau management, and worker placement as well. It's a lengthy game, it's a chunky game, there's a lot to do and a lot to choose from, but it's also very straightforward once you understand what the spaces do. Will you have the most evil in the game? We'll find out when I cover the game. Now I'm not gonna do the how to play and all that because I already have a video that basically covers all of that. But what I will do, and there's a link in the description, but what I will do is I'll cover all the nuances with this new second edition version of the game, talk about the expansion, and then I'll give you my review for it. So there have been some component changes in the game. No longer are you gonna get all those tokens, all the tokens for all the different resources and all the different elements and coins and all that. Now instead, you're going to be getting a board. This board is going to have a basically a recessed well. This isn't a prototype, but you're actually going to be placing your token, your, your little cubes in here, and that will determine how many resources you get as you move them along, which is actually rather nice. You can kind of secure everything in one space, and it's easy to see. You don't have to be moving tokens all the time everywhere. Um, and this is the main aspect as far as the component quality changes. Uh, but there are a few others as well. The, uh, there are fortune cards and henchman cards that have been changed and tweaked. And there's probably a few other cards that have been tweaked as well, like certain ad adventures and whatnot. And the main one is the Master of Domains. Uh, instead, these guys are gonna be used for your starting resources. So much like uh, Terraforming Mars to determine what you start with, you'll take a male and female character, and then you'll gain the gold, the elements, um, and maybe even some resources, and then the cards from the decks over there, and you'll be able to utilize those in the game. And everybody's going to be a little bit different, but still balanced in a way that makes everything fair. And those are pretty much uh, the main changes as far as component-wise goes for the second edition. There are some rule changes, however, as well. In the second edition, monsters that are neutral, that die, you'll actually have a way to buy them back. Additionally, a player doesn't get to keep the first player marker anymore. If no one chooses the Harrow's Town Council space, which normally will give you the first player marker in most worker placement games, there's a space that allows the player to do that. In this case, if no one takes that space, this is just going to move clockwise for the next player to, to do so. Uh, the other thing that I really love about the, the my main favorite change in the game is that when the adventurers, the bad guys, come to visit your domain, this area here. Um, usually what happens is if they get one of your buildings, one of your evil buildings like the Tower of Dark Magic, it'll get removed and everything else on the space. In which case now, it's actually gonna be just purified. It'll be flipped over to its light side and then the monster is going to be removed if it's on the space. So the worst case scenario is you lose the monster and your building becomes purified back to the light. So it kind of doesn't set you back as hard, which is a great, great change in my opinion. Um, there are some other light changes to the game as far as the second edition goes. A uh, main one is the rule book has been overhauled and changed and we'll get to all that in my review. But otherwise, I think you basically got the idea that there are some rule changes and there's some component changes changes as well to clean things up a bit. Now we'll get into the expansion stuff. Much like many expansions for many games, uh, Dark Domains is going to include with its expansion content a bunch of new locations, new heroes that will delve into, or adventurers I should say, delve into your districts and try and defeat you in, or, or help or give you money if you have light areas. Um, there will be different spell cards, some have been kind of condensed, uh, but the game kind of now attempts to have you buy get many different types of cards in different areas as opposed to digging for into one deck. Um, and, and there's henchmen as well that have been changed uh, and so on and so forth. There's also like some monsters that you can summon yourself. And the main thing about the expansion is actually this board here, which is also a prototype. So, you know, it's gonna be, a, it's, it'll be looking better when it's all finished. But this is the Lotus District. 
it's a third board where you can take actions. Normally, it's you're going to have your um, this your main board, and then you're going to have the uh, like board in front of everybody. I think it's called like your domain board and the main board. This is the Lotus District board, which is going to have one, two, three different locations where you can now place your characters, which is nice. Um, the basic uh, changes with this are you are now able to gain two elements of your choosing. Uh, they're kind of like a wild element space, which is the black pool. Um, the Egg Street Library will let you get two cards of any one type as opposed to three cards of any three different types. And then the Wing Wong Market is actually going to allow you to turn evil into resources as opposed to having to spend money for resources because maybe you might not have money. Um, and that's pretty much the main things. I mean, there's a bunch of just added content to this game as far as the expansion goes, but it's just providing an extra district board. So now whenever you go through the game and you like produce stuff, you'll be actually like checking to see what you can uh, do with your action and whatnot. You'll do this board, then you'll do this board, and then you'll do this board, and there's an order to all of them. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's all the different component kind of pieces you're going to be getting. There's a ton of different cards I didn't talk about, but it's all kind of found inside here more stuff more more like different types of things you can do and unique interactions with the game and a whole new board which you can also interact with as well with your workers so like evil high priest dark domains is actually one of my favorite worker placements it has been for quite some time uh, i love these dark themed worker placements that involve some tableau management and control as to where you place things and what you can do with things and this just has a lot of it there are a ton of phases in a turn you have the fortune prep minion resolution foreman adventure production and end of turn but each of them are pretty straightforward once you understand what they do right um, being able to collect things and then being able to place down and prepare for whatever it is you want to do and then place your workers down and then you resolve all your workers in in numerical order and then you can build things with whatever you've bought or whatever locations you've got adventurers go adventuring and they try and mess with you and you'll actually just check the cards and it'll tell you what they are going to be fighting and then production is where you get all the resources that you've gained off of your main board whether it be monsters giving you evil or buildings give you currency or some uh, combination of elements and other things and then end you clean up you move on again to the fortune which is once again you're going to be flipping over one of these fortune or two of these fortune cards and then checking to see and there's so many combinations i love the idea of instead of just drawing one event card now you draw two and that will change as to what you get in the fortunes uh this never is going to get old for me i i simply love the idea of the fortune deck and how depending on randomly what cards the other card is paired with will determine what you're actually going to do in this kind of event scenario. There's multiple events to take place and that feels good. It feels like there are some good and some bad sometimes and that works well for me. Um, basically, I could go on gushing about the main game, which I think is pretty much easy to do. Um, if you're looking for a review as to whether or not you should pick up Dark Domains, uh, then yes, yes, I, I really do love Dark Domains. Uh, but I want to talk about the uh, content that's been changed and stuff like that, like the, the, the starting resources. This was a great and wonderful idea. Um, I also love these boards, you know, for probably production reasons, I would imagine, but also for the cleanness of the game, removing all of the clutter and just putting it all on one board for it. all your stuff is. I also even love the idea of having the phases here so I can keep track of the phases on my own as the main you know person who is controlling the game master kind of moves the the round marker all the way down and back up it allows me to kind of learn the game myself without having to look over there um yeah I, i'm gonna very, be very excited when i see some recess boards for these different resources and elements they are it's this is going to be very 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 helpful um, all the extra cards and whatnot, there's a, there's a smattering of them in the different decks. As a, they're all randomly allocated. I've pulled some of them. They actually have a symbol that illustrates that they're different than the other ones. Uh, they all work well. They do feel a little different, but their effects are fairly straightforward as far as the game Dark Domains goes. Um, when playing the game, I... I didn't notice anything negative um, as far as the expansion content goes. I love the Lotus District. I actually, I actually end up. I was usually a lot of these expansions. I'll, I'll have them out and I'll, they'll sit there and I'll play the base game again and just like 
forget to even bother doing what is on the other boards or other cards or <laughs> other categories of things. But in this case, this is actually really wonderful. It like actually opened up how I can now use evil as a currency as opposed to just a victory condition. Um, I was able to also be able to draw multiple cards from certain decks because of the if, because players are now supposed to draw them from different decks. This kind of gives you a little reprieve from that. And also the way to get elements of my choosing as opposed to just two of one type. This was a nice little addition that just added more flavor, more variety. There is a lot of actions in this game. This is not a light game. This is not a quick game. This is definitely a heavy Euro. This definitely plays in a one and a half to two hours. And if it's your first game, get ready to go into it. Now, learning the spaces is quite simple. Once you look at the spaces, when you see the space and read the space, you'll know what the space does, right? And that's wonderful. The seer lets you draw three cards from the top of the deck, look at them, and then place them back. The business district gives you two money. Uh, the Harrow's Town Center, it literally says two money, and there's a symbol of the first player marker. That means you get the first player marker, and so on and so forth. Now, there's still some complicated ones that people don't like. I, it's not super intrinsic to, to know, like the yellow Swan Tavern and the Green Unicorn Tavern. Those are spaces that you can go on to remove an adventurer from. Um, but you can remove any of the adventurers that are not the main leader, the party leader. And it's not super, it's kind of hard to tell, I suppose. But otherwise, it's all very straightforward. The game feels good. The expansion content doesn't feel like expansion content. It feels like content that the game could have started with and come with, and that's really nice as well. So I just feel like it gives me more options to do more stuff I love. Love the tableau management for the game. All the artwork that's coming out is going to be looking really great. There's some artwork that is not yet re re reduce, re re released yet for this specific campaign, this specific prototype, but if you go on the Kickstarter, you will see all the different components, all the new extra stuff that you can get in the game. But yes, overall, do I still love Dark Domains? Is the second edition worth picking up? Yes, I believe so. Uh, I don't think there's a huge amount of rule change. If you're just picking up the second edition and you already have the first, there's not a huge amount of rule changes and whatnot that I would probably incorporate with the second. Like, maybe I would change a few of them from the first uh, edition of the game. Unless you really want the player mats, like, it. It's not going to kill you to keep the first game and play that if you love it. But if you do want the cleaned up version of the game with some clean, cleaner rules and reduced like clutter, then this is definitely a pickup if you're looking for that. And with the expansion, oh yeah, no brainer, pick it up. It's just more good stuff, adds more fun, more variety. And if you don't know, if you already know the base game, then there's just no reason not to. So there you go, my review for Dark Domains, second edition, and the bonus expansion. Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game. Dark Domain 2nd Edition. It's been a long time since so I did a video for this game and I'm glad to see more content has come out with it because this is a, this is a, well, I don't know if it's a home favorite. It's a, it's a me favorite. I love these dark games that are just super thick. There's a link down below in the description for not only the original review so you can actually learn how to play this game if you want to from like me from like five years ago. Please do not pay attention to my hair. Also, don't pay attention to it now. It's also nasty. I need to cut it. Just cut out the hair completely okay and go ahead and if you'd like hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button if you think we've earned it if you watched more than one of our videos before and you would like to we would greatly appreciate it live streams on wednesdays and sundays uh, whatnot and on facebook youtube and twitch on sundays 6 30 p.m pst all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to heading into the dark domains with you next time